With the large amount of molecular characterization data available today, precision medicine offers the best strategy for medical treatment. It is a medical model that proposes the customization of medical treatment of products being tailored to a subgroup of patients. Drug therapy response prediction also assists in customization of drug treatment. Hello everyone, I'm Uma Zadal. The work that I'm going to present today is about drug therapy response prediction in DLPCL patients using machine learning approach. Let us first understand diffuse large B cell lymphoma. DLPCL is a cancer of the lymphatic system. It constitutes 30% of all cases of non Hodgkin's lymphoma. It is characterized by markedly heterogeneous clinical course and the response to the therapy is not well appreciated with standard histopathological and immunophenotypic evaluations. And hence, there is a need to predict the therapeutic response of TLPCL and develop more precise therapeutic regimens for TLPCL. To address this issue, this issue, personalized medicine approach could be used as it relies on patients' medical history, genomic characteristics to and genomic characteristics to provide the most effective treatment strategy based on response to therapy. Accumulation of drug sensitivity and multiomics data makes it possible to leverage systems biology to identify association between molecular features and drug and estimate drug response to guide personalized medicine. So the aim of this work is to develop machine learning algorithm that would predict the response to drug therapy, drug therapy utilizing gene expression data of DLPCL patients. Machine learning algorithm on gene expression data of DLPCL specific cell models would be used to predict the class of response to drug therapy. The methodology is explained in the work flowchart given below. RNA-seq and drug data was downloaded from genomics of drug sensitivity in cancer website. The drug data was filtered by applying a, the IC50 threshold drugs with the lowest IC50 value was searched on NIH NCI website for proper annotation. From the top drugs, five drugs were shortlisted for further analysis. Further, cell model annotation was done based on the median IC50 value as threshold for categorization. Cell models with IC50 value lower than the threshold were sensitive and those with a higher IC50 value, median IC50 value were considered as resistive. Further, the gene expression data was subsetted corresponding to the cell models on which the particular drug is tested. Further, gene expression data was also filtered by applying a TPM of greater than five. And this data was used for further analysis. So in total, for the five drugs, including gliomycin, positinib, fortinib, ibrutinib, and warinostat, we had around 20, 25, 17, 32, and 24 samples respectively. The methodology of data analysis is explained in the flowchart given below. All the data analysis work was performed on Tober Bioinformatics server. The exploratory data analysis included principal component analysis. It was performed for the gene expression data corresponding to cell models on which each of the five drugs were tested separately. The number of pieces selected were three. Supervised learning algo uh, algorithm were applied to the data. And before that, the data was split into train and test data sets for each of the five drugs, including bleomycin, positinib, fortinib, ibrutinib, and borinostat. Thus, the gene expression data corresponding to cell models on which each of the five drugs were tested was split into train and test data sets. Further, random forest and support vector machine algorithm were applied to the train and test data sets. The number of decision trees 
to construct from random subsets of training data was selected as 500, whereas the, whereas the SVM kernel type was set as linear. Confusion matrix for training data and precision on and prediction on test set were assessed to determine the accuracy of machine learning models. So the methodology is further shown as the, the pipeline that was performed on uh, Tauber Bioinformatics platform is predicted here. The PC analysis, the random forest with 500 trees and SVM with linear as the kernel type. Further, we will try to understand the results of the analysis. PCA uses an orthogonal transformation to convert a set of observations of possibly related correlated variables into a set of values of linearly uncorrelated variables called principal components. Therefore, PC analysis plots gives gene profiles on a 2D plane generating a visual graph where it is easy to see the groups that are associated. Components are the underlying structure in the data. In these plots, we can see the resistive groups and the sensitive groups represented by red and blue dots respectively, but we cannot see a strong grouping of the sensitive and resistive classes separately. For drug response studies, PCA plots are not always representative of the complex behavior of the system. And that is the case that we could not see strong grouping or strong classification of the two classes. Let us see the results of random forest. Random forest is a classification algorithm based on decision tree approach. The algorithm generates multiple decision trees from random subsets of training set. We can see that the total number of correct predictions for bleomycin was three out of five. For bacitinib, the correct predictions were five out of seven. For fortinib, four out of five. And ibrutinib, seven out of 10 correct predictions. And for vorinostat, the correct predictions were five out of seven. So from the graph, we can see that the prediction accuracy was highest for train and test data for ibrutinib. Random forests perform better for drug with highest number of samples. Let us now try to understand the results of SVM predictions. SVM focuses on separate on separating the points that lie near the boundary between the classes. So the results of SVM for bleomycin are four out of five correct predictions, bosotinib five out of seven correct predictions, three out of five correct predictions for fortinib, and seven out of 10 correct predictions for ibrutinib, followed by six out of seven correct predictions for vorinostat. So we can see that SVM performed better or stat. Let us now understand the comparison of ML model across drugs. As compared to random forest, SVM performed better in terms of accuracy for all drugs except for Fortinet, which had very low number of samples or cell models. So we can conclude that SVM performed better as compared to random forest. Let us now move ahead towards the discussion of the work. Robust classification of type of response to drug used in treatment will guide the steps in personalized medicine. In this project, genetically characterized DLBCL cell models could be categorized as sensitive or resistive to the treatment with drugs including gliomycin, Bosotinib, Fortinib, Ibrutinib, and Vorinostat. This would help in determining the response to therapy in patients with TLBCL and thus would be a step in the direction of precision medicine for DLBCL. Further, I would like to conclude this presentation with few important points that 
Drug therapy response prediction is crucial for determination of effective treatment for cancer patients. We conclude that machine learning model trained on omics data can assist in determining, in determining whether the sample is sensitive or resistive to a particular drug therapy, thereby providing options to personalize the therapy for patients. With this, I conclude my presentation. Thank you.